A Bible truth for today's mini lesson is choosing to continue a lifestyle of sin once the Lord heals you, reaps a worse condition. Now, let me connect you to the lesson so you will know what it is you know about sin. And the question is, how do you define sin? You can write your answer down, and by the end of the lesson, you might have a change of mind, okay? Now, to give you some background on our text, Jesus, Mary's baby, Jesus, God's only begotten son, is on his way to Jerusalem for the Passover. And by the sheep market is a place called the Pool of Bethesda, where, and there's five porches, and what the people who are lame, halt, infirm, or blind, they stay on this porch. Periodically, an angel will come down and stare up the water, and the first person to get in that water will receive their healing. Now, Jesus notices this man, and he asks them, uh, will thou be made whole? And when Jesus asks you a question, because he's omniscient, that means he knows everything, he's not asking for information. He wants to know what you know. And so the man was like, you know, I have been laying here for 38 years. Every time I try to be the first in the pool, someone beats me getting in there. And again, Jesus says to him, and you'll see it on the next uh, slide, behold, Thou art made whole. Jesus wanted the man to consider the miracle that he received. Jesus healed the man instantly. And so Jesus says, behold, thou art made whole. The word behold means to look to consider. He wanted the man to think about that. You've been laying here for 38 years, and so now you have been made whole, and he said to him, take up thy bed and walk. Think about it. He never walked before, and because he couldn't move, he was codependent. He had to have somebody help him to do everything. But now he's been made whole. Now he can develop relationships with people, perhaps get a job, be involved in the world and his community, and even go into the temple. And so Jesus is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord, our healer. Jesus is able to heal all diseases and make all better experiences sweet. Now, Jesus does not always use the same techniques of healing. He uses various ways of healing. He may speak a word like he did to this man, There'll be other times where he may give you some directions that don't make any kind of sense. Or he, uh, he may lay hands on you and touch you. So let's not put God in the box. Believe God for our healing, but let him pick the method in which he's going to use. Now you'll see on our next slide, sin no more. In other words, he told the man, I have healed you, but don't sin anymore. Don't, in other words, don't return to a sinful lifestyle. Now, you remember in the beginning, I asked you to define sin. Well, sin in the Greek is harmatia, H-A-M-A-R-T-I-A. And that means to miss the mark to err. Not keeping God's law is being out of the will of God. And that's what sin is. Sin is doing your own thing. It's disobeying what God wants you to do. Now, Adam and Eve were the first people. They were created. They were created beings. And sin entered the world as a result 
of their transgressing God's direct command in the Garden of Eden. God told them you can eat off of every tree, but except for one particular tree. But they disobeyed and did their own thing. As a result, they sin entered the world and each of us is a descendant from Adam and Eve. And so we descended from them. So we received their sin nature that developed after they ate the forbidden fruit. And so when you have a sin nature, it's, it's easy to sin. However, all mankind is born with a sin nature. That's what we call original sin. That's how you were born. But we sin by choice, not by constraint. Some of you may remember a comedian by the name of uh, Flip Wilson. He used to do a comedy routine, and he would say, the devil made me do it. Anybody remember that? Well, that was just comedy. The devil can't make you do anything. Now, he will put a bad thought in your mind, but he cannot make, the devil cannot make you do something. I want you to get that point. He will suggest that if you get a bad thought, understand it, that's not from God, it's from the devil, but you don't have to do it because again, sin is a choice. Now, the Bible says sin is missing the mark, is erring, is being out of God's will, okay? But the world will tell you sin is a mistake, sin is an error, sin is having issues, or a faux pas. But no, we got to go with what God says. Now, he told the man, and you'll see it on the next slide, lest a worse thing come upon you. If we take God's mercy and grace for granted, we're going to reap a worse condition. I know of someone who was involved in a hit and run pedestrian accident and uh, the doctors came with every evil report. Your, your brain is filling up with water. Or you may not be able to go back to your livelihood because I don't know if you're going to be able to use your hand because they broke their wrist. I mean, every evil report, you're going to have to be on seizure medicine for the rest of your life. But a, uh, a lady went up there, laid hands on this person and prayed for him. And when the doctors did more testing, they're like, you're healed. There's nothing wrong with you. You will not have to be on seizure medicine for the rest of your life. And uh, God had used me to tell the person, you know, God wants you to know, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon thee. You know, when uh, things happen to us, we say, okay, we're going to do it. We do it for a minute, and then we go back to our old mess. And so that person did the same thing. And lo and behold, they started having seizures and they had to get back on seizure medicine for the rest of their life. And so we don't, we don't want to be like that. And so I was thinking about it. This man was crippled for 38 years. I'm like, what in the world could possibly be worse? Then I thought about it. I guess what could be worse for him would be the inability to talk a thing. There was nothing wrong with his speech. There was nothing wrong with his mind. It's just that his body. Or a worse thing could be death. So I suggest to you, if we are healed by God's word, and he was, then that should kind of inspire us to live by God's word. The Bible declares in John 8, 1 1 Jesus said unto her neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more that's the story of a woman who was taken in adultery and the men of the town brought her and threw her at the feet of Jesus and Jesus didn't say nothing he bent down and started writing in the dirt and uh, he said uh, he who cast who he was who he who was without sin cast the first stone, and one by one, those men left because they know that they had some sin 
and their lives. And so God is a God of mercy. He's a God of grace and he's a God of a second chance. And so we want to obey him. We don't want something worse to happen to us. Now let's review our lesson. What did Jesus say about sinning once you heal? John 5, 14 says, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. And uh, we'll go back to our learning objective um, slide if possible. Behold, thou art made whole. He wanted the man to consider the miracle healing he received. Jesus is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord, our healer. He told him sin no more. And sin is not keeping God's law, but breaking it, being out of the will of God. Adam and Eve were created by God. And when they sinned in the Garden of Eden, sin entered the world and every person born after them have been born with a sin nature. And be, because God takes sin so seriously, all sin subjects us to judgment by God. Lest the worst thing come upon thee. Let's not take God's mercy and grace for granted because it'll reap a worse condition. And so if we are healed by God's word, let's live by his word. It's time for your verbal quiz and you could write your answer down. I want you to write down your answer to the question, what is the biblical definition of sin? If you are under my voice, sound of my voice, and you have never received Jesus as your savior, I extend an invitation to repeat the sinner's prayer after me. Dear God, I admit I was born with a sin nature. I believe Jesus is your son who died on the cross in my place for my sins, was buried and arose from the dead. I confess Jesus as Savior in Lord. Thank you for saving me and filling me with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. If you said that prayer sincerely from your heart for the first time, the good news is you're now born again. You are a Christian. Go run, tell somebody that you got born again is my prayer, that God would lead you to the Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church of his choice.